Hey everyone, welcome back. So I got a really interesting episode for you guys today regarding the new release from Hugging Face Package, Transformer Reinforcement Learning. And it's so new. I don't think I've ever done anything that's this new before on my channel. Uh, this is being updated only just 20 hours ago. Uh, so we're talking about something that's quite new. Hopefully this serves as a good purpose, a just-in-time update for all of you guys that's in the generative AI domain. And uh, hopefully this episode can be helpful. Uh, we're going to start with high level and we're going to get into the technicalities. We're going to be talking about fine tuning model. We're going to be talking about using run pod, high level GPU, so all that fun stuff. So with that being said, let's get things started. First things first, this is a new release from this package TRL, which stands for Transformer Reinforcement Learning. It's a package managed by Hugging Face. So what they're essentially saying is, hey, now the major change is you can use SFT trainer, which means supervised fine training function to basically fine tune your large language model or small language model to support tool calling. So here, what I mean by that is you can actually provide data set to tell the computer what tools you want and the JSON schema with the tool names, with the definition of the tools can now be automatically registered in the training process. So that's what they're talking about here, which I think is going to be a major breakthrough. Uh, it essentially raises a lot of the questions of all the scaffolding that the engineers have been doing this past year that's surrounding the large language model, the scaffolding around it, the router, the model context protocol, MCPs, all that stuff around large language model to tell the LLM what API to call, it essentially raises a question whether all of that is necessary. So let's take a look at what their release is. So what they're saying is, if you have custom function, you can then create some sort of schema inside of the training data, just like that of the message history that you're going to be using in the API call of large language model. And you can then create the list of tools inside of the training data set and then when you are initiating the trainer, you can actually create the tools and train the model to learn the tools using this data. So as a comparison, so let's go to the API docs for OpenAI. You can click on quick start and you realize that the schema is essentially the same, a list of dictionary when you're passing in the conversation history into this API and you get some response back. Now, the problem is if the user is not just chit-chatting it actually wants some sort of API call behind the scene that the knowledge of the training data of the LLM does not have, then you're going to be calling tools. So down here, there's tool calling, right? Using tools. So for example, the search, right? You can do internet search. And then as another example, uh, you can actually uh, use a wide range of tools. And you can actually do things like getting the weather, which extracts the live information based on your location and allows the large language model to have that information. So you can ask question, what is the weather like in Paris today? So on and so forth. You get the idea. So before today's release, how it's conventionally being done is these tools will have to be rerouted and designed into this LLM so that this LLM knows that the tools exist and can make a decision if the tools is required. And this also, and depending on the context of the tools, if the tools is a client, then you can actually design MCP, or also stands for Model Context Protocol. So if there's a server, then you can call the tools using MCP, and you can register these tools into a large language model API call. So that's how conventionally this is being done. Now, with this new release, what Hugging Face TRL package telling us is, Anybody can fine tune a small language model to pull this off, to essentially register these tools inside of the memory of LLM. So once this model is fine tuned, which here it provides the code for you to do that, the name of the tools is automatically being stored in the memory of the LLM. There's no scaffolding around it. So the remaining episode, 
we're going to dive into code to see how this can be done. So let's talk about training data. I know that the schema, it's a list of dictionary right here. I have a bracket and I have a curly bracket. It's a list of dictionary. And I also have tools. Uh, for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to say I have two customized function. One is called star timer. The other one is called rate reminder. And I can then create a, a list of dictionary using the schema uh, that mimic real world conversation using these special names, right? Special names being start timer and create reminder. So obviously I need the data, right? I can't just copy this because it only has two samples. And I simply ask it to give me a sample in JSON format, give me some snippet of code to load that data in. And that's exactly what I did here. And that's exactly what I did here in this snippet of code. So I started with the free version of Colab. And here I am having a, a T4 GPU but I do not have the pro version. So as you can see, I already blow up the memory, right? Uh, so let's walk through just a little bit. Um, I set up my custom function. Uh, I register the data and somewhere down here when I'm training it, like give me this error message say, whoop, sorry, buddy, it's out of memory. Here, uh, the says, here it says, queue the out of memory. That's what that means. So GPU memory blow up. I cannot continue to train it. This failed. So with that being said, you can, of course, do a bunch of things uh, to try to make this work on a free GPU on Colab. You can reduce the model parameters, uh, which I don't want to because I already have a pretty small model. And then you can also reduce the training data, things like that. Unfortunately, GPU does not work. So that's the end of this Colab. However, that's no problem at all. I also have a Rungpa instance. So I created a Rungpa instance. Here, I'm actually using an H200 GPU. Uh, so it's a good enough of a GPU for me to load a small language model. And that's going to be the infrastructure that I'm using. So hopping into JupyterLab, let's start from the beginning. I have two notebooks in front of me, uh, one on the left and one on the right. The one on the right, I have not used any fine tuning. So I want to show you guys this outcome, just like an A-B test case and control sort of thing. So you know what is the difference of the output with and without fine tuning using TRL package. So on the right hand side, it's the control. It's what happens to this Quen model with 0.6 billion parameters without fine tuning. Without fine tuning, I can ask a question, set timer for five minutes, and then I can run this through the inference and you see that it doesn't really say a whole lot, right? It says, okay, the user wants me to set a timer for five minutes. Let me think about how to approach this, things like that. On the left-hand side, I install Transformer and TRL and I make sure these two packages are up to date and then I can do my fine tuning. So let me scroll down to the bottom. I have these two custom functions defined. One's called start timer, one's called create reminder. And then I register their JSON schema so that I know that these tools can be called. And then I load up my data set. So let me show you what a data set looks like. So this is what the data set looks like. It's in the list of dictionary format that the Hugging Face new release website is showing me. So I'm taking the exact schema, the data is fake data created by ChatGPT, and that is how I created this JSON file. So you can think about a conversation such as, hey, remind me taking medicine at 4 a.m., things like that. And then somewhere down the road, uh, there's a tool register knowing that, hey, the start timer, it's the name of the tool, and we want to use the name of the tool, things like that. Uh, so obviously, these things are uh, registered and created in the training data in order to fine tune this model. So that's what the data look like. Now let's go back to the notebook. I have this snippet of code that I read in the data set. It's a JSON file. And then I can use my SFT trainer to fine tune this Quen3 model to 0.6 billion parameters. And as you can see, this is pretty fast because loading this model probably take a few seconds. As you can see here, I have a couple of steps in this training process. The training loss starts with 0.67 and go down all the way to 0.01. So I consider this a successful training process. We're not talking about a whole lot of time being wasted here. Altogether, I have three epoch and training sample per second is 31 seconds. So nothing is being done that's crazy here, right? Nothing being done is crazy. Anybody could pull this off. And uh, this GPU I'm subscribing to, it costs us 
3.99 per hour. So anyone could have done this, right? And then you run the code, you save the model, and then here we load the tokenizer as well as the model. We send in the same message. Set timer for five minutes, just like what we did on the right-hand side. As you can see the output, it's drastically different. Now the output says, ha, huh, user wants to set a timer for five minutes. The assistant says, hey, let me set a timer for 300 seconds, which is five minutes. And then here's a response. And this is when things get interesting. Here, we actually have a tool calling, right? We actually have a tool calling. The response here actually says, set a timer for the specified duration in seconds. And it sets a second, it exits the tool calling, and then it gives the response back again. So I think this is a major groundbreaking release. The reason I say this is because now everything can be done by fine tuning your model. Now you don't need a whole lot of scaffolding inside of your chatbot infrastructure. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and like.